see the last name is similar. This is my sister by blood in Christ, by friendship and experience. Erin Cross, she is multi-talented. She can, <laughs> should I just go down the list? Aside from being, yeah. I mean, I tell Gas the me people. up, gas me up. <laughs> <laughs> She is, she can sing, she can teach. Uh, by day, she is a music teacher, um, but she is also an amazing business coach and strategist. She is a national certified education trainer for various daycares. She is an author. Um, she is a health nut. So anyway, Erin, I want you to go a little bit more specific in what you do and what your businesses offer. Let the people know. Alrighty. Well, as you said, my name is Erin Cross. I am the owner of Beatrice and the Beat. We are an interactive music education resource. So providing early childhood trainings, providing children's classes uh, via the libraries uh, and in schools, working on an education curriculum that can be used in schools and parents can use it at home to help make their children more music literate. I also own the key factor and key is an acronym for kingdom entrepreneurs yielding. That means you're yielded to the spirit of God, but you are also yielding profits. You're using your gifts, your talents, your experience to create products that go and saturate the marketplace for God's glory. All right, well said, well said. Okay, so later I'm gonna break all of that down, but I want you to go, we're gonna start from the beginning. And I would like for you to share, how did you decide, okay, this is no longer going to be an idea. This is no longer going to be a dream. What are the steps, both financially, mentally, emotionally, that you had to take, taking it from this idea and something you just talked about and journaled about into fruition? Okay. Well, um, I always knew that I would do something in the realm of music. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to write poems. I would sing with, of course, the sisters and family. Um, and I thought I would be a singer, but then I started having this love for songwriting. Uh, I wasn't in the field of the education yet, but seven years ago, um, I was working a job that I just could not do anymore. <laughs> and I'd always seen myself in a school, <laughs> right? And so my mom kept saying, you should be an educator. You should be an educator. No, I don't like other people's kids. That's what my response was. But um, I got into the field. I got, uh, I went and observed a class through my alternative certification and fell in love. I've been doing it for seven years. I, it doesn't even feel like I go to work because I just enjoy teaching kids music and watching them get all creative and then watching the adults, the adults get excited about it. So, um, I was, it was into my second year teaching that I uh, was just like, okay, God, I'm here. This doesn't feel totally like this is all that you have for me. You know, like I can't see myself retiring as a teacher, but I do see a career within education and music. And a friend of mine asked me if I would do a music workshop for daycare providers and preschool teachers. And I was like, sure, yeah, let's see where this goes. And I did it and had a blast. And I'm always someone who is working with ideas, right? I always have all these ideas. Like, if you don't know what to do with your life, come and talk to me. I, <laughs> I got ideas. And say it again. I said it won't execute your own. Ooh. Well, we are executing. But um, but so <laughs> I I began working with my ideas, right? And I started seeing this little girl. And then I started seeing her family and what she's gonna look like and what they're what they're gonna do and the characters and the name came to me. And so I started just writing and I was driving, I literally was driving to work one morning and I started hearing the first line of my book. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And I, so I just was like, 
All right. Okay. And I just let it, like I let my mind follow that thought. And in my head, I started seeing variations of this girl doing things that she was doing in or going to be doing in this book. And I got to work. I didn't even get to work. I pulled out my phone and I'm driving down the highway and I'm just talking the words of the book into my voice memo. And I got to work and I was just like, okay, okay. I think I can work with this. I think, I, what, how can I use this? What can I do with this? And I, when I got home, I wrote out everything and I thought of ways that I could use this because I had already taken a offshore work course and there was movement. And when I thought about using the book, I saw teachers using it to teach kids music because movement is the ontogenesis for a lot of rhythmic patterns. You know, that's how we teach kids movement. We start talking to, we have them do movement and we start teaching them music. So they learn music patterns and rhythm through moving their bodies and learning what those, uh, what that feels like internally. And then we translate it into them playing instruments. And so anyway, I got with a friend of mine, uh, Dawn, and I was like, I'm going to write a book. <laughs> and I need your help. And so she was, she did, ended up doing the editing. I presented the book some years later again at the conference, and people started asking for more resources. And my business just kind of came to me through me following what I feel God had put in my heart, which was the book. When I took action on that, other pieces started to come together and I began to see what the vision, you know, could look like in the end. So yeah. uh, that's how it came to me. Did I answer your question? I feel like I left something out. No, you answered it very thoroughly. Um, okay. I loved what you were saying was just how like, this came to you because a lot of people people need to understand that it comes to you in a variety of ways like when i had chanel on she was mostly mentioning how you know she started just really most of saying this is what i love doing and that's how it came to her cassie last night spoke about okay i needed a creative outlet and that's how her passion and pursuit came to her and so i love how you're saying like it was just kind of like dropped in your spirit that it came to you that you begin to see, you know, the the uh, the words or lyrics of this uh, of this book. And so, what a lot of people can take away from that is it can come to you so many ways. It may come to you out of desperation. It may come to you out of, you know, like uh, I know the lady who run, who owns Spanx. She talks a lot about how it was desperation. She was going through a divorce, and she just really was like. I need to, I need to create something. I need to do something, you know, so it can come so many ways. It doesn't have to be, everybody has to have the same journey. And so I really, really like that. Um, right. So let's talk about, I know you mentioned that since the book was written and you becoming a teacher, all these other avenues begin to open up. So I know from there, after writing your book, you begin to realize that other people needed help in doing this and that yeah. the key factor was born out of that, being able to coach other people on this same uh, journey. Can you speak about that? Yes. Uh, before I speak on that, I would like to mention this uh, quote. Unique Jones, she is the woman who created Culture Tags and she uh, did Because of Them We Can. She tweeted the other day, uh, she, her, this was her tweet. I don't think purpose is something we find. I think it's something we eventually recognize. A pattern, like a series of dots that have always been present that begin to make sense once we identify the consistent thread that connects them all. And with that being said, that is what the key factor helps individuals realize. We start going through and doing different assessments to discover you may real have this feeling that you should be owning a business. You may have this feeling that you should uh, start a bakery or start doing uh, 
uh, different things. And so when you begin to, if you're in that place and you're still trying to figure it out, begin to look over your life. There were times that it was, so many it would maybe be yeah. a year or weeks or a month that I would have, God speaks to me in dreams often. And so I would have a dream about this, or I would uh, be driving down the highway and I start hearing an idea or something that I wanted to include in a resource or something that would be beneficial to serve educators who are wanting to enhance their music program. And so all of that came together. As I begin to go forth with the book, I had a dream one night that I was following a lady and it was a group of people standing in a big circle. And she pointed at me and she pointed at this guy and we began to follow her. And she tapped on doors and every door we tapped on, she tapped on, she told us to tap on it as well. And that to me is actually how this business has unfolded. When I tapped on one door, I wrote a book, right? People wanted me to, or when I started training, the book came to me. So I became an author. <laughs> As I was training, people were asking for resources. That's another stream. I began to cr create other resources, whether it was online courses or uh, different packets, worksheets that they could use in their class, coloring sheets, things like that, flashcards that they could use. And from that, others have asked me to do other things. When people saw me doing all of this stuff, they were wondering how. Yeah. It comes, it comes out, out to me, of, like, that was one of the things that Chanel and I were talking about is like, you know, usually, well, first of all, there's multiple purposes and you will find that it's like, okay, now that I'm able to see this door open, now it makes way for maybe it was more confidence or whatever you've seen this dream, realize it opens the door for something else, but also the need of those people around you who are saying, I need this. And you're like, wow, well, I never initially thought of this, but now that I see, I can show somebody else how to do that. And another business or passion can be born out of that need. Absolutely. Right. Continue. When you think of the, the point, it's all good. It's a dialogue um, conversation. When you start possessing or when you say like, yes, my yes was I went I did the book and it was not an overnight process. I'm not going to lie to you. There were some, you know, you look at your resources and you look at uh, <laughs> your abilities. I am not the artist. Okay. Between us two, you are the expert in the art in drawing and painting and all of that. If you ask me to draw a straight line, my students will say, Miss Frost, that's not straight. <laughs> Let's pretend it is. Okay. But um, when you begin to say yes, and you begin to do one task. God, he shows you the end at the beginning, but he also gives you little things that you can accomplish along the way, okay? He, when he gives you the whole dream of what it could be, that's not to make you feel overwhelmed and start looking at, how am I gonna do this? Well, you eat an elephant one bite at a time, just like you would a burger, you know? So, Say it's really again? to increase your faith. It's to increase your faith to help you see that, like, this is what I have for you. And you know what? Again, it's not the same for everybody. Some people, he does show the end, you know, yes. like, I had this big vision, and so now I'm going to start. Maybe they needed that motivation. He knows us better than anyone. And then somebody, he just shows you the idea, and you don't know what the ending is. Maybe you'll get it down the line. And so, Usually when he does show you, when he gives you that gift of showing you vision, it is that he will, it's to increase your faith, it's to say, I have more for you, yes. you know, but it's, again, it's still, like you said, this wasn't overnight, you know, I don't right. know, how long did it take you to write your book? Well, the book was written uh, in a day. It was revised, right? And then I right. had to look at, okay, who was my target audience? publish from idea to publish three years three yeah. years you see what I'm saying? so years. you can say it's written a day but you didn't take that day three years ago yeah you had <laughs> hey, absolutely yeah absolutely. the mental capacity the confidence the research how the how right people yeah you the know, right people getting all the information 
structure that you need because you're going to try to prep for, then you're going to try to see to make sure, do I have the finances? What is, what is the cost? I'm counting up the cost. And so, yeah, it may have been written in a day, but to be brought to fruition was a complete three years. And so people need to be able to, like I've said before, to really honor the process, honor the small steps. You want, you, you just can't skip the steps. You really can't. You'll miss out on so many invaluable lessons. You can't, you can't, you can't skip the steps, but I will say this. Things take time. Yes. But they also take revelation. Like you have to, you have to be open and willing and not have such a defeated mindset. You know, love yourself enough, as Chanel said the other night, give yourself a chance. And that is one thing that I do admire about her as a, as a friend. She is always giving herself a chance. And I think if people would give themselves more chances, more opportunities to succeed, right. you know, you've already experienced no. You've lived a life of no. You, you know, whether you grew up in poverty or not, you know what that's about. So why not try? You know, money is something, okay. even if you lose it, you can gain it back. Yes. Say it again. I was saying, I always say, why not me? You why know, not? if a friend right. comes to them, I always say, why not right. you? Like, why right. not me? Why, would you, why not you? For me, because um, I can be someone that I can overthink and overthink and overthink. <laughs> um, and that kind of ate my motivation. And then I started sitting with that. The pandemic it has helped me sit with and deal with a lot of things to help me propel forward and know what my next mm -hmm. steps are. And mm -hmm. I just kept telling God, I feel unmotivated. And I actually had to look up that motivation is not a feeling. Motivation is your reason. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times to break mm -hmm. free of feeling overwhelmed or, you know, get rid of getting rid of the fear that's causing you to be unmotivated unmotivated you need to revisit your reason my yeah, reason is that i want to serve kids and adults i want to give them experiences in music education that they've never seen i had a class one of my first couple of years of teaching music where the kids it was a group that was if you didn't have something for them every five minutes they were behavior problems and so <laughs> i like okay y'all not gonna get me today <laughs> and so i went right had my coffee you gotta wake up early okay um <laughs> so i went i just messed around with some stuff i reached out to my brother sam we were talking about some things talking about some ideas um and he gave me an idea and i executed it and that first class one of the students said to the art teacher, man, Miss so-and-so, you should have been in music. It was lit because <laughs> I had them playing the recorder and dancing and they, were, and they were just like, I mean, it was probably Club 204 up in there. And so, oh and <laughs> so kids started telling their parents, Miss Cross likes to party. Uh, don't, don't say Things that too much. Think they're like, okay. you're not even teaching my kids, got to get kids working on <laughs> Right. But when they left that class, one, the time flew by and they yeah. were like, oh, and then the next time they came in, what are we doing today? They don't even give me a chance anymore to say, this is our lesson objective. <laughs> they're like, oh, what are we doing? And <laughs> I'm like, I got something for you. You can't rush this. Okay, it's butter. But I want to say that to say, when you have your why, when you get clear on your why, you know, you begin, you can begin to assess your network and then all the excuses that you want to create to keep you from moving forward, mm -hmm. they no longer serve you because your why, your reason for wanting to uh, push out this, whether it's a product or a cake or an entertainment company or a law firm or whatever, or writing a book, that why becomes more important. Yeah. If you're just sitting there and you're looking at, you're waiting for someone to come and gas you up or, you know, you're looking at yourself rather than how what you have is going to serve others. Mm -hmm. Right. 
like Chanel said, Bishop Jake said, you're not saved to sit, you're saved to serve. Right. And that's no. absolutely true. That's absolutely true. I think of the people who are supposed to be employed by me that are not getting the job that they would love because I haven't moved forward or the kids who are not having an educational music experience that they would want to because they have a teacher with limited resources or who is stuck using European uh, strategies for teaching music. A lot of the music that kids learn in their classrooms is from the 1800s. Yeah. No one says the words lads and lassies and uh, <laughs> there are some words you can't even use because they just sound inappropriate for, uh, for music. To challenge the system to bring change. It's like, okay, right. this one's supposed to be Right. Yeah, and right. not recognizing the power that they have to make those shifts, just right. even if it's just in those four walls. I want to transition to some of the roadblocks. Okay. So, you know, here you are, your businesses are successful, but I want you to bring us to um, one or two moments that you felt like you just wanted to like, like in that three years of writing that book, was there a time you just was like, I, I can't do this right now? Or in you um, wondering how your you know coaching business was going to take off, was tell us about the moments that you felt like maybe I didn't hear what I thought I heard. Maybe I don't feel passionate about this, and you wanted to throw in the towel. And how did you get past that? When I started looking at my abilities, that's what caused a major roadblock. I'm not an artist. I don't know nothing about birthing babies, you know, like I, I had so many things. No, but you know, like you, you know what you can do and everything yeah. else that you can't do, you begin to panic rather than spying out ways yeah, like, that you when can. When I look at my abilities. Yeah. Right, right, right. And so I had to stop looking at my abilities. I had to start, okay, God. What, how? Because I can't, for me, I wish I would try to get out here and, and draw somebody, <laughs> you know, let alone doing different movements. Right. Yeah. And so, um, as I talk about your network, this, your network will save you from so many roadblocks. If you get vocal, and vocal to the right people. If you start talking about the dreams in your heart to the right people, don't go around someone who's not accomplishing anything and who is afraid to accomplish anything and who doesn't want to see you accomplish anything. Yeah. But get vocal right. to the right people. And if you don't have people in your network that are going to encourage you, if you are the smartest person in your network, it's time to find right. another network. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so you can't get I and be motivated from people who haven't even been on that role, who won't even challenge themselves. You know, you need that like mindset. Exactly. Exactly. And you can tell, like, if you mention one little thing, this person starts being negative and they look, they, they mention to you all the roadblocks. Well, do you want to do this? Are you sure you want to do it? Because this could happen and then this could happen. I don't have time to think about what could happen. This book, yes, yes. Beatrice Loves was to was Move, was by Aaron Cross, uh, <laughs> Cross was, I found the illustrator on Fiverr. He did my illustrations for a certain fee. And we, I didn't pay him all at once for the whole book. We literally did page by page. And let me explain to you how getting out of your mind can push you forward. It took me three years to get from idea to publishing, right? Yeah. Two of those years, two and a half of those years I spent in my head. Wow. That December, I went back to the guy because I had to settle within myself to just make a decision. You know, we are looking at process instead of yes, you know on it yeah just make your decision and be at peace with the decisions that you make your business your dream whatever it is it is a baby 
Okay. That means it's going to grow. It's going to develop. It's going to become more. The, I have four more books to write with this character and then others that are going to come as the more characters join in on her story and books from that and additional resources. So I just needed to start. I needed to physically feel the dream in my hands. And you know what? Before y'all know it, she might have locks like me. Or she might she might have a corn roll with it all to the side and down. You know, long hair, don't care. The thing is, you have to start. You have to make this make the decision. Stop thinking, oh, is this well, do I really want to do that? That's gonna stall you. Make your decision and move forward. You know, we're looking for perfection. And a lot of times, yeah, this book, I'll be honest, it could have been way, there could have been way more elements, you know, but right. I knew I had a good place to start and I was at peace with that. All the other perfecting parts will come as I work with what I have and move from there. Some of us were so afraid to start where we are. And mm -hmm. you just need to start. There are people who are doing more with way less than you. I have <laughs> I have joined some groups and people they look so flashy and like they've got the lights, they've got the the <laughs> cameras, they've got this and that. And then when you email or put your information in to get their resources, they send you to Google Drive. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking I'm about to download something from this high-tech website, and here they refer me to a Google Sheet. So, <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. The point is, the resource is available. I took the information that I needed from it, and I was able to move forward. And that's what you yeah. need to do. Look at what's in your hand. What can you do with what you have now? and move forward. So make your decision. That was a roadblock, being indecisive, not, you know, trying to trying to be perfect because my standard, right, didn't necessarily agree with my means, right? So I have this salary, but I have these million dollar standards <laughs> of the work that I want to put out. But I had to start where I was. And now I'm working my way towards my millions, you know. Um, okay. Yes. <laughs> another roadblock was me not, um, uh, I have my notes here. Um, another roadblock was me working through my personal stuff because, you know, when you start anything, it begins to challenge who you are as a person. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Um, you begin to wonder, you know, that imposter syndrome syndrome shows up. Yeah. Am I good and enough? You're like, people like yeah. That feeling right. of like what the perspective or perception of you that's mirrored back. Like, will they accept me? Will they like me? Will they think I don't know anything? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And you have to work through that. If you look over your life, you either work through it or set it aside and keep going in anyway. You know, do it afraid. <laughs> do it scared. Do it not feeling like you are the best. And that's fine. Right. I Just do you it. You have to be willing to make the mistake. Like, if, if I can't tell anybody who wants to start a business, nothing else is like, be, be not afraid to make mistakes. Be willing to fail forward. How are you going to learn the lessons? How are you going to know what not to do? You right. have to be willing to make mistakes and do it afraid and be willing to mess up and even be willing to, you know, if you're worried about somebody saying uh, she thinks she be willing to thank you this, that, and the other, because if that's what it takes to get it done, then thank you all this, that, and the other and get it done. And I know like even, you know, I've heard so many business coaches say done is better than perfect. You know, like yes. even when I, for example, just to, uh, last week when I was with Chanel, you know, I was so disappointed that, you know, we couldn't get the technology together. But you know what? Done is better than perfect. You know, if somebody is so caught up on the technology and not really hearing the gems and the nuggets that we were dropping exactly. that night with some great interview, then they have an issue. But the person who really is there 
and that is for you and is supposed to get the knowledge that you have, they're going to look past all that other little stuff. Just like, just get it done, you know, take it. Exactly. Step. We all have a village and okay. So I'm a pre, we know I'm a PK, you're a PK, you, my sister, so you're a PK, but, um, we all have a village. And so in my mind, you know, I start, I start hearing Bible verses and all of that. Right. Um, but we are surrounded by a great cloud of witness, witnesses. Right. And so how that relates to me in my village here on earth, I have a cloud of witnesses, a group of people who are rallying for me, who are wanting me to excel. Yeah, I have naysayers. Ain't nobody got time for them, you know? <laughs> but you do have people who are wanting you to move forward. And any technical difficulty, your village doesn't care. Any, uh, any quality of product, your village, when so you are starting out, right, right. They're not concerned about that. They're like, man, that I really like the way you did X, Y, and Z. And, you know, Zechariah 4.10, you know, well, 4 and 7 talks about, you know, Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. But if you go on to Zechariah 4.10, it says, do not despise the day of small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. And so yeah. that is what Wait, your village that's the desire that he put in you, that he is wanting to, you to walk out. And he is like, finally, mm -hmm. she is putting right. in, in activating her faith and put an action to what I put inside of her. Right. Yeah. And that's what you have to get in your mind. When this was all in, I like, I get excited seeing it now. I get excited when people email me and tell me that their child still goes to this book at night to read. I get excited when teachers from across the country, teachers in Australia and London are saying, I used your book in my class and my kids loved it because someone that I knew knew them and they knew so, you know, and I am still getting emails. To reach that is your span of reach, and that's what we have to realize. And that's why I mentioned the other night I don't subscribe to. I think it's great that we have people that support us that say, I'm going to buy your book. I think it's great that we have people that say, I'm going to share this and yes. share that on social media. Yes, but no one, I don't hold anybody accountable to do that because I know it is Christ in me who is doing the work, which means He is going to put in whoever's heart to carry out whatever product that I put out. Whatever word I've ever put out, whatever broadcast I've ever put out, he knows how to get it into people's hearts. He is the best networker. And so I don't have to worry about being like, they didn't come to my event. They didn't share my this. They, no, because initially my connection to you, if you are my friend, is, you know, on a personal level. You know what I'm saying? I need you to just yes. say, girl, you can do it. You don't necessarily have to purchase what I have. God is going to make sure that that happens. And yes. so I love how you said, like, people across the world that you don't even know. You know what I'm saying? And so yeah. he is the one who is bringing intuition. He knows how to get the word out for you. Right. And, and when you start moving in that, when you start going forward and – are you there? Okay. Uh, it's kind of pause. But when you start moving forward, he starts adding. Like – when you're talk about looking for passions or looking for dreams, exactly. Your sign is not going to be him parting the sky and saying, yes, write this book. If you're wanting a sign, I am your sign. Go and write that book, build that business, lose the weight, eat healthy, whatever the dream is that you have, make the cake, eat the cake, <laughs> whatever your goal is. Whatever your dream is, do it. Because I kept asking God, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? And you and might be like, <laughs> if you ask me one more time. But but <laughs> being rich, <laughs> being rich in mercy, things would keep working out. There was last year before the pandemic came and tried to stall all of us. Um, <laughs> but last year I asked God. Lord, I don't want to waste my time doing these conferences that pay well if I know that you have something else for me. 
Yeah. And I did a conference. I lost one conference, but I, when I lost that one conference, I said this or something better, something else, yeah. something better. Yeah. Within a week, I got a call that put me on to four different conferences mm -hmm. within the same network. And in two of those conferences, one was in Austin, one was in McKinney. Two ladies said the same thing. I enjoyed your class. I hope that you know you are doing exactly what God has called you to yeah. do. Yeah, because sometimes people want to focus on being profitable. Yes. But really the increase comes when you're being purposeful. Yes. You know? Are you being effective or are you just bringing a product to someone? There's so many ways that you can go out there and make money and that's fine. But really the increase comes when you are being purposeful, when you are walking out what he's put inside you and you're being able to say, okay, I need to have the wisdom to say, is this really only profitable or is this also pur uh, purposeful? Because then right. I can turn this down knowing that something purposeful is going to continue to make more room for my gifts. Absolutely. When I left corporate America to go into teaching, um, I was, I took a pay cut and within this period of time, I am making more than what I would have been making yes. with my job and my business, um, than I would have been making in corporate America. And it's only going to grow as I grow to accept the global classroom because that is the plan. Right. I want children all over the world, teachers all over the world to be able to have these educational music experiences that are relevant, that are culturally diverse, that open their eyes to more strategies to teaching music than what we've been given and what we're using from the 1800s. Yes, yes. So. it is time now for that, especially as we see diversity and inclusion evolve and become um, walking away from tolerance into true inclusion to where not only will you allow me a seat at the table, but you will let me have a voice at that table and recognizing who's in our classrooms so that we can reach them in a better way. Right. We can't be sitting here in 2020 talking about the Cotton Eye Joe like I learned uh, in my elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> We right. can move on and find some other children's songs that relate to these children and being able to equip the teachers to be able to relate to multicultural, you know, a broad range of different children from different backgrounds. And I yes. think that's so great that you're doing that. You have to ask yourself how long and how much? How long are you going to sit on what God has given you? And how much of yourself are you going to give over to fear? Because yeah. once you give fear an inch, once you give low self-esteem an inch, mm -hmm. it's just going to dig a grave for you and bury you in it and then ask that's you why you are buried. That's <laughs> going to pass no matter what. You know, right. I have people that ask me all the time, like, man, you went back to school with kids and this and that. Like, should I do that? And I'm like, okay. You don't want to do it at 38 years old. So, okay, let's say in the next four years, if you don't start now, what are you going to be doing? Right. Like that time is going to pass anyway. Time is already passing. It's always fleeting. So we can't sit there and be like, but I'm, man, I'm 40. Okay, so in four years, you're going to be saying I'm 44. In another four years, you're going to say I'm 48. Like, when are you going to just say, like, I can start. It doesn't matter how old I am, how right. much time. It's never going to be a right time. It's never the perfect time. That's just how life goes. And I right. feel like we have to get out of that being uh, an excuse. Listen, <laughs> I feel like I have so many things, reasons why I can say no. I'm a single yeah. mom. I'm by myself. Ain't nobody over here helping me. I'm like... You know what? And, and and don't get me wrong. I don't sit here and just say, like, I can do it all. I have my moments, you know, mm -hmm. but I reminded to God, like, even like just before this podcast, like the dog was barking. The girls was like, I'm like, no, I told y'all I'm doing mine. Can y'all calm down? That's the dog. <laughs> I was like, I have my daughter's hair. And I'm like, I got 10 minutes before I have to set up. Like the house was chaotic. But I calmed myself and said, I can do all things through Christ. When things were really hectic, 
I know that I can look to God, I can reach for his grace, and I can get the job done. And I, every time, there's so many times I'm like, how, God, how? When he says, I want you to do this, I want you to do that. I'm mm -hmm. like, how? And I remember one of the things that you and I share sometimes about uh, Minister Bill Winston, how he says, the devil's in the details. Like, we can yeah. be here and try to figure out how we're going to iron out all the details. The devil's in the details. You trust God to take you just day by day. You focus right. on the day by day. Right, you know? right. You have to, if you don't, you're always, if you want an excuse, you can always find it. You know, you can always find a reason to not. But what's more important is that you do it. The fact that it keeps coming to you, the fact that you can't, like you can go years or months and it's still, that dream keeps showing up. The fact that you can't, you know, you can't not think about it. That is your right. sign that you need to act on it. That's right. Don't worry about the, the, like how it's going to all come together. Joyce Myers said something years ago and that it has always stuck to me, stuck with me. She said, you will not possess the promise until you get to the promised land. Mm -hmm. You have to journey go in that path you're journeying you're getting to the promised land mm -hmm. is saying yes and then creating a plan yeah if you don't know where to start brainstorm it doesn't have to make sense take a sheet of paper write out all the things that you want to right. accomplish your head that yes. paper. and then start connecting the dots it is not going right. to be the season for all of it to happen right, right. now but I guarantee that you can look at that piece of paper and pull out something and say, I can do this today. For example, I can go downtown or log online in this modern day of technology and register my business. I can start first by registering with the state or for 35 or the county for $35 if that's the cost, or I can put a plan together. I can buy a domain name for 99 cents. I'll figure out how to use Wix or Square or iPages or GoDaddy another day. Yeah. Squarespace another day. I can at least look on Fiverr and pay five to $10 for a logo. Yep. There's so These many are... ways now. And so it's just about saying, what is, the, what is the very first thing? What is the one thing I can do right now? Right. Okay. And then same time next week, I'm going to spend another 45 minutes saying, what's the next step that I can do? And I'm going to do right. that. So we've yeah, got we, to, we, so we have to work as hard for ourselves, even more so than we would for a job. A lot of times we give so much to our jobs and we may not want to, that may not be our <laughs> retirement plan. Yeah. Right. We're building someone else's vision and God is like, if you just get started on yours, I'll send people to help build yours as well. Where you can eventually then focus on yours alone. <laughs> you know, so you can't be more committed to someone else than yourself. It is good to have awesome work ethic. But when it comes to ourselves, we tend to lose our work ethic. If you were you, would you hire you? Yes. You know, <laughs> do you show up on time for yourself? Do you keep your own deadlines? Do you have time management? If you go on break, is your break months? <laughs> or, is, or is your break 30 minutes and then you're back on it? It's so key. You know, um, Cassie and I were talking about that last night. An accountability partner is so key because, and I have multiple, you know, that will say, remember you said that you was going to have this done by, you know, in two weeks. Have you started? Where How's that going? Because yes. when you um, have that pressure to answer to someone that will hold you accountable to being your best self, like why not do that? And you right. you know that you gotta you gotta answer up. You know you gotta come and say, okay, either I did or I haven't, or you're finding another excuse. So I think that is so key. So I don't I always say I don't want things to go too long. So can you speak as we close out? Can you speak to the woman, whether you've been in her shoes or not, but she is sitting with all the excuses. Um, she's kind of down on herself. She's looking at her resources and she feels like it's not enough. 
how can you encourage, can you close us out by really encouraging those listening who has held on to a dream for years, who's held on to a dream for years. And it's really the, the mental that's holding them back, the mental baggage, the emotional baggage of just not believing in themselves or not really seeing the gift of what mm. God has already placed in their hands. So I would tell that person to stop sab sabotaging yourself and level up on the self-love. Start loving mm -hmm. yourself. When you're loving yourself, you're not talking down about yourself. You're not demeaning yourself. You're not diminishing your abilities. Go and write out a list of all the things you've accomplished. It doesn't matter. I ran 5Ks. That's an accomplishment. I ran marathons. That's an accomplishment. It doesn't matter if it deals with education or, mm -hmm. well, that's the realm that I work in. But write out, like, if I, if I were trying to hype, gas you up, what are some of the things you've done? Maybe you can do hair well on the side, but you don't do, you know, you're not a cosmetologist or whatever. Write out all your attributes. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're not, we're done with the self-talk, the negative self-talk. You've, you've done that for years. It's time to let that go. If you need to just dig a grave and, and bury it all in there, then sit with your dreams and get clear. A lot of times we aren't moving forward because we're not clear on what, what it is that we want to do. We have this idea and that idea and this idea. And then we're like, why is this not launching forward? Well, you're everywhere. Sit mm -hmm. still and get Start clear. Yeah. Start. Once you are clear on what it is that you want to do, we're not talking about the things that you like to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're talking about, <clears throat> these are things that people you the cliche that you hear them say, if you weren't paid to do this, I'm not, I'm not saying that because you're going to pay me. I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just real. You're going to pay me. Um, <laughs> I'm saying this is the thing that has been tapping you on your shoulder for years. It is the thing that when you think about it, you cannot let it go. Yeah. It feels like time just flies by when you're doing it. It feels effortless. Like you feel the grace of God yeah. in it. Get clear on what that is and commit to it because that's what getting clear is. You're involving yourself with it. You're wrapping your head around it and what, what, what the possibilities are. The possibilities aren't for you to do it by yourself. God's going to send the laborers. He's going to send people to assist you, whether it's someone giving you a break on the price or whether it's someone just doing the work for you because they want to help you out, you know? And so once you um, reach one level, you're going to have to find yourself recommitting. So you need to get in the habit of getting clear and, you know, recommitting yourself to the vision. Then you need to get vocal, as I mentioned before, to the right people. Find the people that are doing what you love to do or what it is that you want to do, right? Even if, it, even if it's, just I want to throw this in real quick, even if it's uh, virtual, even yes. if it's online, because, right. you know, a lot of the things that I want to do, I may not personally know people, but I know how to find people on Instagram or on Facebook, and they are kind of like my virtual mentors, yes. you know what I'm saying? I'm looking at their products. I'm looking at how they do things. Yes. So it may not be in the media <laughs> circle. Look, I have people that I have cut out from magazines or newspaper clippings, and they are posted in my office. So when I go into my office, I'm like, hey, girl, you here too? <laughs> we going to get this work done. <laughs> you on your grind? Um, I'm Me on mine too. too. <laughs> but these are my these are my business besties, right? <laughs> and they don't know they don't know me yet. Like, they will. <laughs> right, all right. Um, and so get vocal. You know, find these people. Start attending events that are within your industry. Training events. You know, you may not feel confident at first to talk about what you want to do, but. Get in those circles, involve yourself in the conversation and listen. You don't have to divulge what it is that you want to do, but celebrate someone else when they're describing what they have done. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because that's going to help them be open to 
allowing you in that circle, you know, and wanting to help you. And you can begin to culture, cultivate that neck, that network. So, um, you want to get vocal sooner or later, people will want to see results. So when you're getting vocal, it also holds your feet to the fire. Like, Oh, I got to get this done because I said I was going to do this. <laughs> All right. And you, while you're doing this, you have to get to work. Mm -hmm. You can't say I'm a bake a cake and then sit down. Right. The cake doesn't get made. Right. Why do I keep talking about cake? Let's move on. No. But, <laughs> but you have to get to work. Do what you can where you are and be consistent. For example, I am building uh, like resources or content that's going to go into the website. Now, I can't handle all of my social media right now, how people are like, post three times a, a, <laughs> yeah, no. a week. But I have right. found the beauty in creating systems. And yeah. while I can't show up to post here and there and everywhere, I have found resources that create systems. So like for social media, I spend a Saturday or a Thursday evening, you know, creating spend a couple of hours creating the social media post I have for a month or, you know, a quarter. And I put that up, schedule it all. I create it and I schedule it all to go yeah. up, you know, publish. Yeah, at the right. Time that and going back to your network, your network will give you resources. For example, Chanel Yarbrough, who owns Bright Girl Media last year, she released an awesome content calendar for free. <laughs> Yeah. And she gave you ideas for the whole year of things that you could post. And you just go in, you download it, you join her newsletter, and you, uh, you modify it. But right. these are, you will find that you will get less, less overwhelmed when you are getting to the work of planning and executing yeah. that plan. And that is what will help you be consistent because you have created systems within your business that will give you back more of your time yeah yeah so I, love it. I would tell the person who is wanting to pursue their dreams do it if you are looking for a sign i am your sign do it yeah. stop playing around stop playing these games stop you know you can lie to others but how long are you going to lie to yourself how long are you going to keep telling yourself i can't i can't all the while you've been doing it all along if you've written out the plan okay now start doing X, Y, and Z. If you're worried about what other people are going to think, that's not your business. Focus. Mm -hmm. I, watch, I listen to Jesus and Joel off with Yvonne Orgy and Lovey and J.E. And they're like, face your fronts. <laughs> you know, <laughs> face the things that are in front of you. Stop looking over here, looking over there, listening to what other people are saying or watching what they're doing. Focus on what's in front of you. Get Absolutely. that done. You know, and you may have seasons where you're like, I just can't. I just don't feel like it. Put on your big girl panties and get to work. <laughs> because the sooner that you execute all of this, the sooner you are going to start experiencing the life that you want. The life you've right. been living is not the life that you want. That's why you keep thinking about this dream. Go after yeah. it. And don't discredit grace. You know, I know that we are in such a society of um, the hustle, the grind. And don't get me wrong. That absolutely has its place because God will only uh, multiply the seed that you sow, that you plow, right. that you fertilize, that you water. But if you do feel like you're burnt out, take a day, take a week, you know, and then get right back to it. You're right. going to need that so don't discredit, you know, God is going to give you the grace. And even if you're at a deadline and you have to deliver and you are so tired and I have been there, you know, I remember when I was pursuing my master's, there were times the girls were sick, but this was a goal that I set for myself. I didn't sit there and say, oh, this big thing happened in my life. And so, you know, I, I decided to drop out, you know, it's like, no, I sat there many nights, stayed up late with them. <laughs> Sometimes I had to cry myself. And then once I put them to bed, I took a moment and at 1 to 2 a.m., I started studying to maybe 4 a.m. Right. And I got my little sleep and started the day all over to do it again. And so 
it's going to take that grit. It's going to take that grind, but you trust God to give you the grace as it, well. And right. You will, see it. you will see it come to pass. So it's not that you're not uh, able to accomplish it. It's that you have not activated the right system to do it. If you look at your job, you will see that they have systems for everything, policies for everything. This is how we do this. This is, we have trainings every Wednesday. We uh, <clears throat> have this type of meeting. This is the paperwork that you need. This is when this is due. The grades are due this week. Progress reports are due this week. You know, they have systems how things run, schedules. You're will, you will feel less overwhelmed when you have a plan with action steps, realistic action steps right action items for you to accomplish and a plan yeah. if you so are a plan if you how i hate to use another cliche but if you it really is true if you don't have a plan then you're just planning to fail because right. everything that we see that is up and running in this world it has a plan a yeah. plan so you need to create a plan and that plan may be bare bones at first but trust me, more will come. Yeah, more will come. Respect more. Yeah, expect more. Well, thank you so much, Erin, for being You're on this welcome. Line. So many nuggets and so many gems. I hope all of you watching was able to get some great information that you can apply to your own life. And if you feel like you thought of someone that it could help, that could be a blessing if it wasn't yourself, please share it with them. I just want to see everybody win. I want to see everybody succeed, everybody walk in their purpose. That is why we are here. That is a part of our human experience is to carry out what God has placed inside of us and pour it into others. We need each other. We need each other's gifts. We need you, sis, we need you. And I just can't stress that enough. I love to see, especially women win, you know, we have been so oppressed over the years. I don't care what skin color you come from. You have that story. And so I really want to see all of us win. All of us walk out our purpose. So again, we're dreaming in December. Keep dreaming, ladies. Get your plan together. Take the first step. And I want to see you win. So that is all that we have. Erin, please tell the people how they can find you on Facebook or Instagram or your website. You can find me on LinkedIn at Aaron Cross. Uh, you can also find me for Beatrice and the Beat at on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook, Beatrice and the Beat. On Twitter, it's Beatrice's Beat. Uh, for Instagram, Instagram and Facebook, you can find the Key Factor, and it's uh, underscore the Key Factor underscore for Instagram. So. Uh, if you're wanting to connect, if you're wanting business coaching one-on-one, -on -one, I'm available. If you just want to uh, mastermind, I'm also available. Uh, so yeah, just reach out. I would love to work with you. And hold up your book so they can see again and tell them where they can purchase your book. You can purchase an autographed copy from me. I will drop it in the link here. Or you can get on Amazon or Barnes and Nobles and you can purchase the book there. Her this book is Beatrice is called, Loves Beatrice to Move. Love to Move. Can somebody put that in the comments? Beatrice Loves to Move by Aaron Cross. So on Amazon. All right. Well, thank you again, everyone, for watching. Thank you, Aaron Cross, for sharing your journey thank you. with us. Thank you. Gina says she loves the book. Ashley says, awesome, ladies. Danette's clapping. Thank you all so much thank for y'all love and so support. I love our village. I love it so much. All right, guys, that is our time. I will see you all next week. We have another um, uh, entrepreneur that's going to be with us. I believe it's next Tuesday. So stay tuned for that as well. Everyone have a good night. Bye. Bye.